Hey, it's Joshua here with another edition of Mortgage Clarity. And today we're going to talk about VA assumable loans. Uh, we're going to talk about this both from the buyer's perspective on what does that look like, but then also from the veteran's perspective of selling the loan and what does that entail? What's the risk to it? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? So let's go ahead and just start with the definition of what it means to have a loan that's assumable. It quite simply means that the seller who has his current mortgage can allow the buyer to assume or take over the payment on that loan. The benefit to the buyer is that they might be able to take on that loan at a much lower interest rate than what the market's currently offering. Um, right now it's about 2022, interest rates have moved up quite a bit from what they have been in 2020-21. So if I'm buying a property from somebody and I can assume, let's say, a 3% rate in a market that's demanding, say, 7%, well, that's a great savings for me as a buyer. Now, from the seller's perspective, the benefit is if I'm in a, a market that's maybe competitive on a selling side, meaning uh, buyers have more of an advantage, my house might be more attractive and either sell faster or be worth more because unlike my competition, I might be able to offer a potential buyer the ability to take over my loan at a much lower rate. So that's the benefit for both sides. So what does it look like then from the buyer's perspective of assuming? And what are some key things you must know? Well, first key thing to know is the only thing you can assume, the assumable part, is the current balance on that loan. So if they're selling a house for 500,000 and the loan balance is 400,000, if you qualify, and I'll get to that in a second, you can assume that $400,000 loan, but now you've got to come up with $100,000. If you don't have the cash to be able to do that, then you're going to be looking for a second mortgage to tie together with the loan you're going to assume. So now let's talk about the mortgage process, because this is very much different than the typical loan you get. On a normal loan, you can go choose to work with whoever you want as a lender, a mortgage broker, you know, a bank, whatever the case might be. You can choose who you want to work with. So you might have somebody who you know and you trust and you've worked with the past and it's been very simple. However, on the assumable portion of the loan, you don't get that choice. You must work with the servicer of the loan. So whoever the seller is making that payment to, which typically is not who they did the loan with. It's a specific company. Think of a servicer like a property management company, so to speak. You have to work with that servicer. Now, the downside to this is servicers are not lenders. They're not set up to do lending on a regular basis. And a sum of mortgage have not been something that's really been a thing for the last 20, 30 years because rates continue to have dropped. So you might find it very difficult and time consuming to work with the servicer. Now you still have to qualify for an assumable mortgage. Just because you're able to take over the veteran's loan and they're okay with it doesn't mean you don't have to show your ability to repay. So your credit score has to qualify. Your income, your work history, your assets, all the same requirements that are tied to getting a normal loan, you must meet in order to assume. Now, if you don't have the money to cover the gap between the loan amount you're gonna assume and what they're actually selling it for, you have to get a second loan. As I mentioned, the servicers are not lenders. So in this case here, that means you're going to be working with both a servicer, who again, it's not their expertise to do loans, and then a lender to get that second loan. And you're gonna to have to find a lender who has a, a standalone second that will go in second position that when it all ties together will work for you. So it is a very time consuming and much more complex process, however, if you can make it work as a buyer, the advantage is you might get an interest rate that's substantially lower than where the current market is. Now, let me flip it back to the seller side now and talk about the veteran and some things they need to know if they're thinking about allowing somebody to assume the mortgage. A key thing I want to tell you is that until that loan's paid off, there can be negative impacts to you, the veteran, for allowing somebody to service the loan. As a veteran, your VA housing benefit allows you to purchase up to a certain amount of housing, depending on your qualification. If you have your full benefits available, meaning it's not tied to another property, you can purchase you know, upwards of a million, million and a half, $2 million home 
without having to put any money down. However, the moment you have part of that benefit tied to a property, that greatly reduces. And how much that greatly reduces can be down to as much as zero. You essentially can't use the program. It just has to do with what, how much of the original loan on the VA compared to the current max uh, conforming loan limits. And there's a huge calculation, which we will not dig into in this here. The key takeaway, though, is it might impact your ability to use the VA program at all. Or perhaps you can use it, but now instead of being 100% financing, you have to come in with 10, 15, or 20% down. So that's the first thing to know. Secondly, is just because the person who assumed your loan qualified, the VA signed off on it, allowed them to take over that mortgage. If they fail to perform on that loan, again, that can negatively impact your ability to use your VA housing benefits in the future, either in part or in whole. Because if they have a default, that claim will still be tied to your certificate of eligibility. And based on how much of a claim went out, going through, again, calculations we won't go in this video, VA might say you can't use the VA benefit going forward. Or if you're going to, you now need to come in with money unless you as a veteran choose to repay VA whatever portion they had to pay on that default. So that's kind of the general thing. Again, VA loans, they do seem, you know, the assumable loans seem like a great idea. And I'm not saying they're bad, but there's a lot you need to know about it. On the buyer side, again, you must qualify. You must come up with the money to cover the difference between the loan you're going to assume and the purchase price. And it's going to be a more complex and time-consuming underwriting process as you must deal with the servicer and not the lender. On the veteran side, again, it's a great opportunity to market your house as being able to provide something that most houses can't. However, that comes at the risk that should they not perform or even as long as they um, are performing but haven't paid off that mortgage, it can impact your ability to use your VA benefit for yourself should you want to. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. I know this is very detailed, so I'm sure you're going to have questions. Just reach out. If you found this helpful, you know, hit the like button, subscribe. And uh, again, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. Until next time, have an excellent day.